So we built a, uh, an anonymizer that um, takes video and um, blurs out the faces of everyone in the video and then uh, takes the audio and, um, and runs it through phase vocoder to uh, change the pitch of the audio to make it uh, less distinguishable. So the application when you thought about this is a witness protection where someone can sit in front of a well-lighted room and with a camera in front and that the, the face will be all blurred out and pe uh, people on the other side of the uh, voice streaming would not be able to tell who the person is as we can quickly demo over here. So okay, so put the camera close to the speaker. All right, so speak. Okay, so I want you to stand up near the camera there. Okay. So, as you can see, it's tracking pixels very nicely. And Farron, why don't you do the same now? You have glasses on, so let's see what that does with the glasses. That's a very cool effect. And of course, my face down here at the bottom of the screen is also blurred, even though I have a camera pretty much in front of me. Yeah. Okay, so speak into the anonymity. <laughs> That's me talking now on the anonymizer, and it's it's understandable, but certainly a story. Okay, so now talk, tell me about the technology here. Uh, so I'll talk about the video, and then Darren will talk about the sound. Um, so the video is basically um, we have uh, input from the NTSC camera, and. Um, we translate that down. We uh, we we bring it down to 640 by 480 pixels, and then we go through every pixel on the screen and um, look for basically the levels of red and green and the difference between red and green. And that's a flag for uh, that detects basically what is skin color. Um, and um, we have a buffer that stores uh, a 40 by 30 uh, frame. That's, that, that's these big square pixels you see that are the blur pixels. I see. So, so if, you, uh, if you turn the threshold high enough, um, low enough, uh, you can see what that frame is storing. Um, so this is the entire thing blurred out. Um, and uh, when we... Slowly raise the threshold. So, so what we do is we take the original pixels that make up each of these larger uh, sections of the screen and um, when we go through pixels one by one, we flag whether or not it is detected as skin. And um, if a lot of the pixels in that little square were detected as skin, um, the, the, it, it accumulates. And so then that whole block is determined to be skin color. I see. So, so, it's, so if there's a, uh, a few non-skin pixels or, say, the pupils of your eyes or whatever, then that still gets blurred over. Right. So as long as a lot of it is skin color, mm -hmm. um, or it detected as skin color by our metric, then that block will be skin color. Um, and so then we have a bunch of flags that say which pixels in the 40 by 30 uh, frame are going to be uh, uh, blurred out, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, we have another thing that averages the color of that pixel, or of that block. Um, and then we put that average color over the top of the original video feed for those pixels, for those squares. Um, mm -hmm. There was a little bit of 
uh, if you just do that, you'll have gaps, especially when someone has glasses, you'll have skin around here and then, you know, plain view right here. And so what we did was, uh, every time we look at a pixel to determine whether or not we're going to blur it out, uh, we look at the pixels around it, and if the ones around it are also blurred out, we blur out the ones in the middle, so it fills in the gaps. And that's why you're able to see, like, when Fearon had her glasses on, you can't, you can't actually see where the glasses are. Okay. This okay. algorithm is a really big advantage of can it, it can re, uh, it can detect multiple people as you can see already like uh, in real time. It's really fast and also it's not limited to how many people are in the screen. So it's it, uh, if this like it has a lot of like it has good real life uh, mm -hmm. applications mm -hmm. and like both the audio and the visual effects are really smooth. So so tell me about the audio now. You 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 uh, you take the data in. You do an FFT on it. Right. So uh, the the algorithm is called uh, Facebook Vocoder. Um, so uh, we taking the audio, which is a forty eight k. Uh, hertz uh, audio sample rate, and our processor pr uh, operates on a 50 megahertz. So we have a lot of computation power that can that we can use to uh, process the audio sample. So the way we uh, stream in the audio sample is we pop them all into a FIFO, and we we push them all into a FIFO a FIFO container, and then over time we have uh, multiple uh, windows. And um, we take each frame and apply a hand window on it. Uh, so the hand window really helps reduce the frequency leakage that will result in non-periodic frequency uh, after FFT. So we apply a window, and we'll get, it will give us a relatively high accuracy of like the high, ac high accuracy of description of the frequency of the visual sample. Mm -hmm. um, another thing we we want to note is like after the windowing applies, so like the window. How we apply it on the on the frame is kind of like um, is is it like a waveform? It's raised so, cosine, right? Uh, it's not quite. It, it's similar. It's it's uh, similar to bell curve. It's it's called hand window. <coughs> so a, as a as a result, it attenuates the data on the side of the stream uh, uh, of the frame. So to retrieve these attenuated data, we overlap every frame uh, with about like three quarter of the three quarter of the week, uh, frame, and then we retrieve the data that got attenuated. We, ac uh, we accumulate the phase and magnitude that we, uh, that we processed. <laughs> and o over time, we, uh, we put all these frames through FFT, and then we will interpolate it on the frequency domain, both in terms of phase angle and magnitude, and we result in a pre prolonged pre prolonged pro prolonged pro <laughs> <laughs> um, and we result in a slightly uh, enlarged version of the recording so we put them back streaming back out from the IFFT and this is a relatively relatively smooth sample except slightly longer so, so you're, <clears throat> but you're also frequency shifting, right? So you take the FFT, you shift down the so components is, a factor of two or so. This is not quite shifting the fre frequency just yet. It's uh, it's in line the pro pro So there there are two there are two steps. So the uh, FFT and IFFT effectively in line the recording of mm -hmm. the frame without mm -hmm. sacrifice without changing the frequency. So it's the same exact voice except played really slowly okay. so you, you can actually notice like people so when we were testing on it it's, it sounds like the people speaking are really tired okay we have to one minute we have to finish in one minute <laughs> so after so after the uh, so with the longer output we mm -hmm. sample it in the linear space so so, so the first step gives us a longer video of the same mm -hmm. frequency of the people person speaking, and the second step gave us a, 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 a sample of exact same length, except the frequency is shifted higher. Okay, I get so, it. so that's how we got the Donna Duck voice. Okay. And another, so, so in order to ha have the video streaming working in real time, there are two crucial factors. So one is our computation is fast enough so that, that we can do it in real time, and the 
uh, so so uh, in order to accomplish that, our FFT and IFFT are using quad processors and quad, po uh, quad output, and a lot of computations are pipeline. So um, every FFT's operation takes 500 cycles, and because of a pipeline and a quad output, uh, uh, because of our quad output scheme, we can actually do it on, this, on the order of 500 cycles. 